from smashing lots of rackets to telling the umpire that he'll do what he wants. Here are the times Roger Federer went wild in the middle of a match, starting with the time Federer mocked the chair umpire. Yeah, don't let his cool demeanor fool you. Federer has lost his calm on many occasions, especially during some tough matches. But when he's up two sets and has multiple match points in the third, even then? Well, yes, and this deserves a bit of a backstory. So allow me to set the stage. Melbourne's heat tends to get to the players, and playing at the Australian Open 2007, Federer was supremely upset with the umpire. He'd gotten a couple of calls wrong, and Federer wasn't having any of it. Then, on one of the match points right towards the end of the game, the umpire called another one of Federer's shots out, which was probably out. But in the heat of the moment, the then number one player in the world gave the umpire the coldest of stares. Then, he turned his back and mocked the umpire while pointing to the big screen. And, uh... I was just trying to take uh, big cuts at the ball, trying to keep the, the rallies to, uh, to a minimal and um, make sure I, I keep him off guard and uh, mix it up as much as I can. And I think I returned very well in the beginning. The commentators were laughing and the crowd had fun too, but Federer was clearly very angry. Though this wasn't the only exchange he's had with an umpire. I mean, do you guys remember when Federer gave a physics lesson to the umpire? Having lost a point to Burdich on the blue clay in Madrid back in 2012, Federer walked up to the umpire and told him that he doesn't think Burdich made that shot in one bounce. He explained that for the ball to spin the way it was spinning when he made contact, it was only possible after a double bounce. On the second replay, it was clear that Federer was right in his scientific explanation, and the ball did bounce twice. The umpire sided with Burdich, and an upset Federer made his way back to the court. It wasn't as wild as the rest of the instances, but deserves a mention. But it tends to get worse when he's playing someone like Rafael Nadal on clay, as it happened back in the 2011 Madrid semifinals. Once again, there was trouble with the chair umpire. Federer had edged Nadal in the first set of a thrilling encounter, but was finding it really hard to hold on to his serve in the first game of the second set. <laughs> some, fan, some fans call me that. Uh, I don't call myself that, but uh, yeah, we have a lot of animals in Switzerland. Uh, and goats are part of the, the livestock we have over there, yes. <laughs> Nadal would turn up the heat and after a hard-fought rally, he turned the pressure on with a deep return. Now, on second replay, it does look out, if not kissing the line by a whisker. But Federer stopped playing completely and challenged the call. The chair umpire came onto the court and pointed to Federer that the ball had been on the line, with the line umpire seconding the chair umpire's decision. Federer couldn't believe it. He raged and said, no way is that shot in. But the umpire just didn't agree and the point went Rafa's way as he cruised to a win. Talk about a meltdown. But for the next entry, allow me to take you 23 years into the past. Emotions poured out of me. Um, I was incredibly happy, as you can imagine. And then, of course, also seeing my entire support team and Mirka and everybody else just uh, going bananas was... <laughs> Yep, I'm talking about the Sydney Olympics of 2000. Federer was down by a set and two breaks in the second in the semis. He would go on to be denied the chance to win a bronze too and would end the ceremony in tears. But Federer was also feeling the heat in Sydney against someone he'd become really good buddies with later in his career. Tommy Haas, who absolutely schooled Federer in the first set and then was up 5-2 to two when Federer made an unforced error. That added up to the many poor shots that Roger had played over the course of the semi-final. And and all that came out as Federer kicked his racket completely annoyed. I can't get over that look from the young Swiss star. That infamous ponytail and temper for days. It's remarkable how much he's changed over the next few years. It's not the moment I told him well, it was the juniors really, so I'm happy to take a lot of pictures today, you know, and maybe you do less like today. Uh, you do hardly any pictures, so from that standpoint, um, goes in phases, but it's true that sometimes I'm also tired, you know? But the temper doesn't go away, completely. You all know that too, right? And it was something that would come back on many occasions, especially against Juan Martin Del Potro. It was the 2012 Roland Garros quarterfinal, with Federer down a set to the Argentine. In the second set, Del Potro won a point to get two set points in the tiebreak, with Federer not being able to live with Del Potro's hammer of a forehand. But it didn't help as someone in the crowd also yelled at a crucial point in the rally causing Federer to lose his concentration. And the quick cameras in Paris caught Federer's reaction as he wildly yelled, shut up. To be fair, it was very effective because despite losing that set, Federer came from behind to win the quarterfinal three to two. Sometimes a little yelling can be cathartic, but it wasn't always the case. As I take you back to Federer's early days with a lot of broken rackets. 
hopefully we'll see each other again on a different type of tennis court. Like you said, somewhere around the world. I have no plans whatsoever where, how, when. All I know, I would love to go uh, and play places I've never been. On one occasion, playing indoors against Tim Henman, Federer missed an easy passing shot, and he would go on to destroy his racket by throwing it to the ground. On another occasion against Nalbandian on clay, Federer lost a point that he should have definitely won, and proceeded to smash his racket while also yelling expletives on the court. There are many more occasions when you can find a young Federer taking his anger out on his poor rackets. And these are worth hanging in the Louvre, because it rarely happens once he matured. In fact, did you know that Federer had to take anger management for a few years in order to control his emotions. Yeah, he was something of a brat growing up and his parents were pretty embarrassed to admit that their son had massive anger issues. You know, that traveled with me for around the world. It's been amazing with them. So thanks to, to everybody who made it work for so many years. And then, of course, being on the team with Andy, Thomas, Novak, Matteo, Cam, Stefanos, Rafa. He would also cry a lot and be unable to control his emotions on the court. And then suddenly, he changed. Federer learned how to control his emotions, especially on the court, and managed to have that really calm and collected look about him. Not losing it, no matter what the situation, and many believed it propelled him to greatness. I agree, though you'd think it's something that would never happen again, right? But you'd be very wrong. Tennis can still be a tough sport, and it brings out the wild side, even for a calm guy like Federer. After all, he got booed for destroying his racket against Joe Djokovic at the Miami Open 2009. This was proper wild stuff. In fact, many believe it was the first time Federer looked unlike his sporting image since reaching the top in tennis, as he smashed his racket for the first time after seven and a half years in 2009. He even got a code violation and was booed by the crowd, declining to shake hands with the umpire after a defeat in the semi-final of the 2009 Miami Open. If I feel like I can't win tournaments anymore, uh, that's another thing. And if I feel like I can't beat the best anymore, that would be another one. So as long as all stars are still aligned, I think you answered it perfectly. <laughs> is, is it, is, does that mean it's more physical or is it mental? Because... But this still pales in comparison to the next one. The 2009 US Open final against Del Potro. When Federer was under the pump and feeling it against the Argentine, he felt that the umpire was giving Del Potro a lot more time to make the challenges than Federer was allowed and asked him if if he had any rules or if it was different for each player. Then, the umpire tried to shush Federer by showing him the hand and the maestro replied by saying, don't tell me to be quiet. When I want to talk, I talk. Whoa, bossy. And then, after his rant, the umpire tried explaining the situation and Federer, steaming at this point, tells him, don't talk to me. I can't lie. It was hilarious to see him that angry. That's all I had on the wildest Roger Federer moments during the matches.